I wanted to go ahead and just finish our discussion here because again, once we, you know, I'm, I'm warning you, <laughs> we're going to have good talks. It probably is going to go on forever, just like how it was whenever we were on layer two, but you know, layer three is so exciting, you know, and, and, and it's used every day. So I want to make sure everybody, you know, including myself, um, any questions that all of us have, you know, just in general or with each other, as far as just clarifications, as far as how does routing work, the actual action works before we dive into routing protocols, which has to do with route learning, which is a totally different thing. So I just want to make sure everybody understands the two different ones and, and we're all good. And, you know, I know folks in here work in a production environment as well. So there's plenty of folks who can add value because by no means I'm a guru. We all can learn from each other. So let's go ahead. Well, let's talk about the setup that I just did, right? Build a random lab, got pickets going from the source to the destination, that source being my um, my left side, my left land being 172.16.1.0, going to my destination, 192.168.2.0, okay? And I have two ways to get I got, you know, I can go through the R2 way or I can go through the R3 way, okay? And throughout this entire environment, right, I'm running OSPF, right, to learn routes. Because, of course, configuring static routes, we probably wouldn't have got started um, probably until tomorrow morning. So I didn't want to waste that time. So went ahead and configured, you know, went ahead and configured um, routing protocols. Now, right, since from router, router one standpoint, since there's, you know, two ways to get there, right, it's, it shouldn't, right? It shouldn't install, and it's not going to install both routes, right? Unless, you know, there's things that match up the same, like, okay, is, you know, is the cost the same? Is, is you know, if the cost is the same, is the metric the same, right? Um, it's going to do, you know, the first check, again, like we were talking about before in our last session. There's three, three situations to where um, that qualify to install a route in a, install a route to a destination, um, into its routing table or their routing information base. Um, and again, you know, that first thing that it qualifies for says, all right, let me, let's look at the longest match. You know, let's look at that prefix. Is the way to get to 192, 168.2.0, what's that prefix look like, look like? If I'm trying to get to dot 51, is the prefix for that route a slash 24 or is it a slash, I don't know, is it a slash 26? With the longest match matches qualifications or criteria, if it's a slash 26, I'm going to take the slash 26 route. But let's say we both have the same exact longest match. We're going to go down to administrative distance, right? OSPF, and, and, and of course, in this environment, we're doing OSPF. So that's going to kill it right there. So now we're going to go down to metric. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to see what got installed and why. And we're gonna, you know, talk about the rib and the fib. So, who else just joined? Oh man, Mace Windu, what's up, man? I know this is a, uh, this is one of your favorite topics. Yeah, he's still muted. So let's go ahead and pull up the uh, routing table. Give me one second. Go ahead and pull that up. Oh, cool. And let. Pull this up. And first, so for now, right, let's go ahead and look at our OSPF routes. Because that's what we're looking at, our source and our destination. So from our one standpoint, right, we're looking at what's the way that our traffic gets from you know from r1 right that's sourcing from our local land which is the 172.16.1.0 network to our destination network that our traffic needs to get to 192.168.2.0 right and it looks like here it's taking gigabit zero slash one which is towards r2 right and so Again, it, it's, you know, we need to understand why, right? We can't, you know, there's a couple of debugs and stuff we can see as far as we can go ahead and populate. Um, 
and I'm sure Clark will go ahead and talk more about that. But at the fundamental level, right, link costs, right? What's the cost? Just like spanning trees. What's, how, how is that cost in comparison to the bottom links, right? So that's, that's what that's, you know, that's what that's looking at, right? Whenever we get into metrics or what have you. And Claude, please correct me if I'm wrong. But again, we're looking at longest, longest match first. Look, checking that prefix, right? If it's both a slash 24, right? If they're both advertising a slash 24, there's no need to go ahead and look at the longest match as far as the qualifier. Now let's go ahead and look at administrative distance. If both, if the entire topology is using OSPS, cool. That administrative distance is this first number, right? It's 110. If we're running the e-grip, right? If we're running e-grip and the routes are both still sh shooting up a slash 24, e-grip would win. e-grip AD is a 90, and of course, OSPF is a 110. So that'll go ahead and win, and OSPF wouldn't even, wouldn't even be would even be installed. Now, is that, would that be sufficient? It depends, it depends on the environment. But fundamentally, again, you know, even though eGrip was Cisco's protocol, they're gonna go ahead and make that a lower AD. And just until recently, I just learned different boxes have different administrative different, uh, distances for routing protocol. Very weird, you know, but it's pretty cool to learn about. Um, but we're talking about Cisco now. So let's go ahead and keep, keep rolling. So. After we go ahead and, and we, we, you know, we go ahead and talk about longest match and, and we talk about AD and the AD is saying it's going to go ahead and look at metric. And so we see, right, the metric here is, for, is a three. Okay. And Claude, correct me if I'm wrong, for, for metric tiebreakers, right, it's, it's about which route has the highest metric. Is that correct? Um, Claude said he was on a call. He dropped it in the chat. He said he's on mute right now. Okay, no worries, no worries, no worries. But yeah, somebody keep me honest here, but I believe it's it's the highest metric. Somebody feel free to research that, what have you, but that's what gets installed, right? And so, again, this is just the rib. This is the routing information base. This is where, right, that part of the CPU up to where these decisions are made, right, as far as, hey, this is the route it's going to take. We already did the calculations. Cool, right? But the routing information base isn't the sole thing within a router that says, hey, shoot it out this way, right? It's, it's taking information from that adjacent information base or the ARC table and the FIB, which is, you know, the forwarding information base. And again, that forwarding information base is all, they're all working in sync to go ahead and make a decision on where to send that stuff, to send it to send that information back to the routing information base to say, oh, okay, perfect. So now I can go ahead and make a full decision on, hey, to send traffic to 192.168.2.0 slash 24, we need to go ahead and shoot it out zero slash one because I checked my JC information base and I checked my forwarding information base and we all came together and said it needs to go out this interface. So that's typically how it looks. And of course, to go ahead and look at that, you know, look at the forwarding information base, it's again, show IP Ceph, Ceph being the Cisco Express forwarding um, engine. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And of course you can shorten it. Let's say we're just looking at 192.168.2.0 for now, or you can put the host address, but when you go ahead and do that, it'll tell you which interface you're gonna shoot out of. Right. Or like I said, you can go ahead and put that. But yeah, it already made a decision in the background on how to get there. Right. And it'll tell you, it'll go ahead and lock it in there. Okay. Here's how you get here. And I'm going to go ahead and take this way. Right. And so again, our discussion before, how do they all work together? Right. So the forwarding information base, right. Set table. That's what we're going to call it. We're going to keep it simple. It's basically a mirror, right. A mirror of the, of the routing information base or the routing table, okay? But this is where the final decisions are made, right? And what the forwarding information base is doing is saying, okay, perfect. So we need to go to 192.168.2.0. I learned this route, right, from, you know, my next hot router. So I need to go ahead and this visual is made coming from this router, right? Coming from this interface. 
So I need to go ahead and make sure that's locked in and I know how to get there. So as long as I know, right, and, you know, zero slash one is connected to R2, right? If I know how to get there, I'm going to make sure I know how to get there via layer two and layer three. And the forwarding information base is in working in conjunction with the adjacent information base. They're working together. They're making sure they, hey, do we know the hardware address, right? We know the MAC address. Cool. Perfect. And we know the interface where it was learned off of. Perfect. We're going to shoot that information off to the routing information base or the routing table. And boom. I'm going to go ahead and send another copy to the forwarding information base and say, hey, this is where we're sending stuff at. And everybody's still working together, working together, working together and saying, all right, cool. Keep sending this out. Keep sending this out and making sure you send it out this way. Right. And the great thing about routing protocols is it's done automatically. There's keep alive. There's hello. Of course, some fundamental stuff that you guys learned in your own studies that's sent so that all these things, right, traffic can be sent in conjunction without any errors or what have you, and everything can be updated automatically, like Claude likes to say. And so that right there is, again, the basics of IP routing has a function, right? And IP learning as well. But again, I'm not gonna focus more so on IP learning, it's more so IP routing. Because again, two separate functions, but of course they all encompass IP routing as a whole. So with that being said, again, that's it. That's it, you know, and, and again, our moving forward, our sessions are gonna talk about routing protocols in depth. We're gonna, we're gonna start small talking about um, eGRIP, because again, you guys are studying for Cisco, and of course, in your CCNAs, CCMPs, they're gonna put, push eGRIP first, then jump to OSPF, since it's widely used, then BGP. But again, I wanted you guys to understand the difference between IP routing, IP learning, how a router works, because again, it, it, it's helped me in the past with troubleshooting, with setting up labs with, with everything. So any questions, guys? Did, any, did something not make sense from what I said? Oh, I got a question. So Yeah, what's up, boss? Uh, so from, from looking at those two tables, I just want to reconfirm. Mm -hmm. uh, to get to the um, 192.168.2.51 PC or 50, I forgot um, what it was. 51. But mm -hmm. PC. Is it nine, I think? Is it PC9? I'm saying to get to like PC9 from router one. Yeah. Um, that one is, so it's taking, um, is it going to route, router two, then to router four? Mm -hmm. Um, And it's doing that because, because I was looking at it, because I, I would assume if it was a tiebreaker between um, going router to router, um, between router two and router three, router three has the, I guess, it's not a longer mask because because what I'm thinking is since it's 10.3 10 versus 10.1 and they have the same prefix, that means that they're still tied. Mm -hmm. So but it's no. So, it's, so okay. I, okay, so you're on the right track, right? But it's not so much the hops, right? It's, it's not so much those, those intermediate link broadcast domains within each other, within each router. It's the mm -hmm. destination, right? Okay. So the destination we're worried about is this. We're only worried about that prefix, which is a slash 24 for this network. We're not okay. worried about 10.5, 10.4, 10.3. Okay. We're worried about this. This is our destination. Okay. What's that prefix? It's a slash 24. Right. Now, let's, let's say at the bottom, right? Let's say at the top, we're running OSPS. At the bottom, we're running, we're running eGrip. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say, you know, for some odd reason, it learned 24, you know, a slash 24 up here on an egret. It learned, well, let's say, scratch that. Let's say this is running OSPS as well, but it learned a 26 down here. Mm -hmm. The first tiebreaker, it's going to take the bottom route. Right, because it's a longer um, prefix. There you go. Right. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah. Um, so because of because they're the you know they they're essentially the same and they, and they don't have a difference in that um why would mm -hmm. it still the one north why would it why would it take router two um instead of router three because from what I'm seeing here if I was just looking at it I thought it was gonna mm -hmm. take the top uh, well the one at the bottom again because it's the ten dot three and and I know you say I need to pay attention to the actual end destination but to get there. 
um, is still going through, I guess, the longer, the higher IP addresses, which pretty much what I'm saying, the range, because they have the same um, AD because they're both, they're using the same routing protocol, um, OSPF. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. that's, um, so the only thing I'm saying that's really saying, hey, I'm better is essentially that higher um, IP address. So that, I, I just want to clarify why, again, why is it going um, through the 10.1 network and not the 10.3? Because everything else looks, you know, even e or equal. So let me ask you, what type of protocol is OSPF? Is it a, it's is a, it a per hop? Is it a per hop? Is it a vector? This is no, a vector or is it a link state? It's a, I think it's, it's, it's not a link state. I think it's vector. I think RIP is link state, right? I might have them mixed mm -mm. up. Mm -mm. Nope. Rip, rip and egrip is distance vector. Okay. Right. And uh -huh. so OSPF is link state. Right. Link state. So we're going. Okay. So we're going based off of cost. Okay. <laughs> so us going based off of cost. And again, I want you to get this out of your mind because you said it again during your explanation. Mm -hmm. We're not worried about the intermediate, right? The intermediate um, subnets to get to our destinations. That's not part of the decision making that the router makes. Okay. Okay. So if I have, right, if I have a, you know, if I have one network trying to get to a different network and I know about the destination, right, I'm going to compare, right? We have three tiebreakers. First tiebreaker is longest, longest prefix match, right? Who mm -hmm. has a, who has a, who has a, a more exact match to whatever, you know, whatever the destination IP address is to that specific mm -hmm. subnet, you know, who has a better site annotation that's specific to that, right? We're going to send it there. Right. Okay. If, mm -hmm. if I learn from two routers, R2 to R3, R2 and R3, that they're advertising, right? Via OSPF or whatever routing protocol they're using the same longest prefix, longest prefix, I'm sorry, we're going to mm -hmm. go ahead and go to administrative distance. Okay. Is there a difference there? Okay. Since this whole topology, right, from a layer mm -hmm. three perspective, since we're only using OSPF, everywhere around the AD is 110. So let's go ahead and move to metric. Okay. okay. Yeah. Metric goes based off of cost, right? So now, right, I have a metric of three. I have a metric of three. What's going to be my metric going down the bottom route? Let's take a look. It'll be four. Take a look. Good question, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Pop that. Oh, yeah, let's give it time for the Link State database to update. Still updating, still updating. Go ahead and rush this. There you go. IT. There we go. Nice. Let's do that. What do you see, Patrick? What's that metric look like? Oh, it's four now. Makes sense? Yeah. And you just, okay, 192, 1682, and, and how did you, so you, you did a command, you, um, you, you did a clear IP? No, I didn't, I didn't clear it because it already did it by itself. But I could have went ahead and, and stopped the OSPF process from operating. Then it would go ahead and what that tells the router, or if I did that for any routing protocol, what that does is, it initiates the process start over, just like Windows. Whenever you're starting mm. stopping a program it, and you're just starting it back up and just stopping it, stopping a service or something, that's basically what I did. I just stopped OSPF and basically restarted it. But again, I didn't have to populate that command, right? But that's beside the point, right? The main mm. focus is, right, it went all the way down to the last tiebreaker, right, mm -hmm. you know, in the background, right? And since this has a metric of four, since this whole topology is, is doing – OSPF, we, we had to go all the way down the metric, has a has a last tiebreaker. And going through R1, R3, R5, R4 has a metric of four. When R2 is in a stable state, 
a stable state, it's it has a metric of three, right? So again, to correct myself from earlier, it goes based off of the lowest, the lowest um, metric number. So again, and to correct myself, so if that makes sense, does it make sense of how that election process happens of what gets installed into the routing information base or routing table? Now it makes perfect sense. So it's a sim- so it's similar to like um, spanning tree. There yeah. we go. That's what I was looking for. And exactly. okay, and it makes again OSPF open shortest path first. So the shortest mm-hmm. destination. Okay. All right, I got it. Hey man, Drop. they're both they're both based off an off a of Dijkstra algorithm, bro. They're That's both it based off trees. That's mm-hmm. it. They're both perfect. based off trees, bro. Yeah, uh, it makes perfect sense. I, I was it, I was kind of getting lost there, but it's highest, highest, highest. It's pretty much highest, highest, and then after that tiebreaker, so highest, me- highest uh, uh, prefix. If that's mm-hmm. equal, and then we're looking at protocol um, as far as like AD. Um, mm-hmm. If that's the same, if they're all OSPF, um, it will go ahead and uh, skip that, and then it'll go say okay. How many links does it take me to get there? And then that's the, that's the tiebreaker. So if it was, for example, the bottom was ERGRP, um, it don't matter if it was like six um, routers to get there, but if they all were EIGRP, they would still win because OSPF is still a, a, a higher um, AD? Nope. So you're close. Oh. You're on the right path. You're on the right path. It's okay. It's okay. No, okay. You're, you're getting there. You're getting okay. there, right? And let's not, let's not try to simplify it, right? Because the, the router, which is again which is why you know kudos to multi-layer switches it has a lot of stuff that it has to do right Mm -hmm. it look you know that first tiebreaker cool that's easy right that second tiebreaker okay let me go through my entire you know my entire routing you know information base and see okay did i learn routes from you know dynamic routes from internal bgp external bgp the different routing protocols that have different administrative distance numbers, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm looking, you know, if, if I was a router, right, I'm looking for the route with the lowest administrative distance number, okay? Mm-hmm. And hell, let me make sure that that the admin, Patrick, didn't, you know, statically configure a route. Because if he did, cool, that saves me some time. I don't have to look at nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay? Gotcha. And so... And so, but if not, right, if you didn't configure nothing statically, cool, I have to go through all these routes, right? If, if, if I'm connected to a whole bunch of, you know, routers, right, that, that I'm learning routes from, right? I need mm-hmm. to go through all of that. Then, again, I'm looking for the lowest administrative distance. So, again, back to the example that I trashed, if I have to compare OSPS to eGRIP, right? eGRIP mm-hmm. has a AD of 90. OSPS has a administrative distance of 110. Right. We're going with the lowest, right? The lowest is the highest, right? So we're going mm-hmm. with the lowest number, right? right. So I'm going to choose eGRIP. Probably not the best links to go through. It's, it's my eGRIP, right? To go to my eGRIP path, it's probably uh, a freaking AOL, you know, five <laughs> meg link to go through rather than my OSPF path probably, probably would be better. But again, right. it's a Cisco device. eGRIP is on there. They're going to push. They're going to say, hey, you know, using a Cisco protocol is better than using a, a in- industry standard or, you know, interoperable, you know, vendor neutral freaking uh, protocol, right? So we're going to keep that just, you know, we're going to go based off of the RFC on that one. So again, that's what it's going to do there. But then right at the metric, right, we can't simplify it as there as well, because each routing protocol has different metrics that it based stuff off of. Right. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. Right? right and but it's okay right so because patrick or myself we can't remember all those metrics <laughs> by hand we can't remember that that's why we have these devices here mm-hmm. right as long as you know right the fundamentals the basics and that's what we're going over right what's 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 it's looking for is it looking for highest is it looking for lowest et cetera, et cetera. once you of course you get in the packet tracer you get into you know, your physical switch and you play around with it a lot, you get used to what different metrics are for different routes, dude, you're golden, bro. You're going to get used to it. So okay. you're not meant to be a supercomputer. You just have to see it long enough so that you're like, oh, okay, I, I know what this is. I, I know why it chose this. And that's the goal of, again, from my journey, and I'm, I'm sure a couple of other um, 
people that are on this call that they're learning about their journey is as long as you see it long enough in your lab and your lab and your lab and all of it's going to make sense. But right. to go back to the discussion again, metric, that's a whole, we can't simplify that. That's a whole different thing in itself that the router has to go ahead and, Hey, let me, let me look at the metric. I, I have multiple OSPF routes for this same, you know, longest prefix match and the same AD. Let me make sure, let me see what matches up. Right. Cause I could have had a whole bunch of routers. Mm-hmm. Right. And of course, it should, you know, within my database, of course, that you got, we can't see it, but I'm, I'm seeing a whole bunch. I got to go through 10, 10 mm-hmm. routes for the same longest prefix match and the same AD. I got to make, I got to now look at the metric and see who has a better metric. Right. And so right. that's what it's doing as well. Okay. So again, those are the concepts of choosing which route to install in the routing table or the routing information base. And again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm going to keep shooting those words out to you guys because I want you guys to get used to saying those words, okay? So when you guys go to your interviews, you guys are just having tech talk at, at, you know, at tech conferences or what have you, you guys know this jargon, okay? Right. And that's, that's about it. Guys, I didn't want to, again, I didn't want to make this super long because, again, our, our actual routing protocols talk is going to get long. And, and you know, Claw, it's, I don't know if Claw's still on here, but you know, Claw yeah, can here. go for days on routing protocols. He, he can go for days. Mace Windu can go for days on routing protocols. <laughs> you know, and, it, and, it, and it's such a good dis- discussion, and, it, and, it, and we have to know it because all of the products that we support, especially stuff in the cloud, rely on one of the biggest routing protocols that, dude, even somebody that's been looking, you know, that I've talked to that's been looking at, you know, this specific routing protocol for years, it's still it's still difficult to understand it's bgp so oh, it, it's 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 you know it's everyday learning bro so you know yeah it's a little I have precursor my... to... so yeah um <laughs> yeah that was interesting so yeah it's networking yeah it's 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 very interesting so um oh yeah yeah I, i'll talk to you later about it on a personal note i don't want to hold it up the current <laughs> session <laughs> no nah, it's all good it's all good yeah. it's all good guys any other questions um, if I missed something, please let me know. Um, if it didn't make sense, again, um, Christian's here, Claude's here. Um, hey, so, so let, let me let me throw something in there real quick. Yeah, go ahead. So, like Dave said, you said that first one, you know, longest match, you know, the most specific route. Mm-hmm. Uh, that second uh, tiebreaker, lowest administrative distance. That's what we're talking about. The one ten OSPF. The 90 for e grip, you know what your static is. You know your static is going to trump everything yeah. else. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Now, before we get to the lowest cumulative cost, which is what he demonstrated with the metric down there, okay. So the cum- the cumulative cost of hitting each one of those routers, either router number two, or router number three, router number five, to get to router number four. Okay, mm-hmm. that's the lowest cumulative cost, which would have been router number two, which is why it decided to take that path. Okay, because that cost was just was a lot was lower than trying to go router three, five, and then four. Okay, now there's another one in there that actually comes before the cumulative cost, and that's OSPF and, and how it prefers the route origination. Where is it coming from? Is it coming from within my area? Or is it coming from within another area? Mm. Okay. So you'll hear about LSA types. Okay. Uh, Type one, type two, type three, uh, type five, type seven LSAs. Okay. And what you'll understand is that you have intra area, you have internal area, and you have external routes okay and these routes could be statics that you may actually interject into ospf or something like that a lot of times those are actually identified in the routing table uh matter of fact he has it up right here if you look at uh where is it e at yeah like e2 on that legend that that dave has on his uh cli screen oh yeah ospf external type type one and there's also there's an external type number no that was type two there's also an external type one as well okay so 
depending on how this how a given route is 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 originated within ospf that can make a difference as far as that route selection and that actually will be calculated first before we get to the lowest cumulative cost so i just wanted to throw that in there as well okay uh, so, no. so, so so just think about it you got you got four different which we want to call them tiebreakers in a scenario like this dave went over longest match okay the administrative distance then you want to look at your preferred route or, or origination within the ospf area okay and then you get into your lowest cumulative cost across those that that given network to get to its destination and i'm assuming the internal one is going to take um priority so an e yeah a, yeah e so so a e route a route and see Dave, is this this is a single area OSPF that you put together, right? Yeah, just single area. Okay, so you know you're going to be dealing if you was to do a show IP OSPF data database, you'll see LSA types one and two, <clears throat> LSA types one and two. Okay, all within the same area, which means it will trust those routes first. Okay. So we don't we don't have any other areas that's interjecting some other routes from, you know, some extra, uh, some autonomous system that's hanging off, uh, hanging off the edge or something like that, or even just routes within another area itself. So it trusts all of these routes because all of these routes are within the same area. Okay, and see, then that's why you know it goes to that 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 very last step that that cumulative cost that Dave was talking about. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right. Cool. Dave. This but is yeah. Awesome. But Dave, he laid it out for you. I mean, he he laid it out. He kept it one hundred. He laid it out for you right here. Sweet, sweet. That's cool. That's that's all my questions. Uh, thank you, everyone. So yeah. Um, sorry to take up all the questions. Hey man, you ain't got to apologize. You're good, bro. You're good, guys. Any other questions, man? Again, I try, I wanted to keep this short, but again, feel free to ask questions while we're here. Um, because again, once we in, in two weeks, we're starting routing protocols and we're starting with eGrip. So just, again, ask your question. Oh, I'll take that as y'all are good to go and y'all ready to uh, eat and, and watch some TV. So I'll go ahead and give you guys some time back. Guys, thanks again, as always, and I'll see you next time. All right, man. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Good deal. Later, folks. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank good you. Good night.